Hi everyone, welcome to the first ever Dennis and Me Director's Commentary. Well, I didn't actually direct it. Uh, Adam King directed it, did an incredible job. Yeah, this will be like a behind the scenes style video. I wanna emphasize just how much happened behind these episodes. First off though, I wanna take this opportunity to thank you guys so, so, so much for how incredibly well this show has been doing. I, I really can't emphasize enough just how nervous I was going into the launch of this because I mean it's definitely just like an anxiety thing but I was like it might come out and then it might just be a complete flop mainly because it just took so much hard work to get this done so many people invested like the last year and a half two years into this thing so for those of you who've even just watched a single episode I can't thank you enough uh, you contributed to my childhood pipe dream becoming a reality and I'm still kind of in shock and awe. Now that season one is fully out, I really wanted to talk about it more and maybe do some little kind of reaction. We're gonna have some fun today, guys, all right? I'm excited. So why don't we start off with the first episode that was released, Lemonade Standoff. Lemonade Standoff is technically the first episode that came out, but technically the real first episode is Homoclone which was ended up being the third one that was released. We sort of switched up the order at the very end. The reason why, let's actually go to Homoclone real quick. So the idea with Homoclone, you'll notice that it's very, very like Sir Meowzalot based. And that's because Homoclone was uh, one of the first scripts that were written. And that was whenever the show was kind of intended to only be like a Sir Meowzalot show. The actual title, Dennis and Me, ended up happen coming very late into the actual like idea phase of the show. For a long time, I was only planning it to be like, Sir Meowzalot is the main character. You barely see Dennis, if at all. But then, yeah, we sort of decided like it would make way more sense for there to be like an actual like dynamic duo. Home Clone was the first episode that I actually did voice lines for. So I can show you guys that actually. Let's play the first scene of Home Clone here, just like a few seconds, and then I'll show you the animatic of it. Bye, Sir Meowzalot. Remember, Use the door if you leave the house. Meow meow. Bye, Sir Meows a lot. Remember, use the door when you leave the house. Meow meow. First off, my voice line is terrible. I sound dreadful. Remember, use the door when you leave the house. The first round of voice lines that I did were like, this is pretty bad. Like, keep in mind that I am not at all a professional voice actor. What we originally did is I just recorded lines normally just on my computer, and then we used that for like the first animatic. Then what we ended up doing is we brought on a voice director. We decided that because I would usually be flown in to like actually do lines in like a proper recording studio, obviously for COVID, related reasons we weren't able to do that so what we did end up doing is setting up my walk-in closet as like a home voice recording studio and I put up blankets and stuff everywhere I have some footage of that I'll pull up right now so what you're seeing here is me literally in my closet I brought in like my laptop I was like re I'm really weirdly looking at the camera yeah I don't know if you can tell but I'm sweating so hard here not because like I'm nervous or anything but because like just in my closet with no AC and like my body heat just like radiating and like the heat was so dense in that room and I'd be in there for hours recording voice lines. So right now I'm just listening in to, I had Diana, my writer there, Michelle, my producer was there as well, and then Supersonic Sound and Denise Oliver, my voice director. So I had like a handful of people listening in. We were going through the scripts and they were recording the lines through like a browser software. So I don't know if you can hear it. Yep, makes sense. So on 25, I want some false, some false concern. I'm like, I'm like turning it up so you can kind of hear Denise through my headphones. You can kind of hear how she's directing me. Like a little bit more intensity on that. Like your super, super meows a lot things he's done for. Right. So she's literally saying like, okay, like this next like Sir Meows a lot line, I want you to be like a little bit more intense, like really give it more umph. She's taking notes on like every line that we did. And then she's like, for this one, it would fit way better if you were a little bit more like this. I'm no like, my face is literally drenched in sweat. Hey, wait a second. Oh, this is a Dennis line. Can you do it one more time for me and hit that A a little 
I don't know if you heard her there. She was like, can you do that one time, one more time for me, but hit that hay a little harder. It's like literally holding my hand through every single step of the way. Hey, wait a second. I didn't like that one. Hey, wait a second. Hey, wait a second. I'm trying, I want to find some meows. Meow, meow, meow. Okay. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. I was pretty nervous for the first recording, and then when it got to Sir Meowzalot's lines, I literally couldn't find the voice that I usually do for Sir Meowzalot. I was like trying a bunch of different meows, and I was just like, I, I, it doesn't sound like Sir Meazla. I don't know what's going on. Like, this just doesn't sound like Sir Meazla. Even right here right now, it doesn't really sound like it. This might be one of the first sessions we did, so I'm, like, still a little bit rusty. Mm -hmm. You see here, I'm, I'm also holding up the wire, because, like, the way, the way that they're doing audio is, like, the actual recording has to be so perfect. The standard of quality is, like, you can't have any slight little noise or distortion or anything. So, here, I'm holding up my headphones wire because like if I let it dangle it was like ever so slightly tapping like a, a drawer in the closet and so it's get so like the whole time I'm holding it up and I'm like making sure that nothing is everything sounds like perfect meow 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 ah okay it's so ending up yeah that's that's good I wanted to end up all right anyways <laughs> so I want to show you guys next okay <laughs> no disrespect at all to Cartoon Conrad, but I just think it is hilarious. The first design that was put together for the Dennis character. So these are my notes that I provided. And you can see in the middle here was the original Dennis design. I essentially needed to, without actually being there in person, explain exactly how I was like envisioning things in my head. I'm so proud of how like, genuine and like authentic it feels to like the channel and that was from many many rounds of like edits and fixing little details and finally getting it there but you can tell just by looking at this this was the first dennis design that came back you can tell that it's dennis but you look at it and you're like oh that is that is not dennis <laughs> it's close but that is not dennis but then we eventually got there that was the yeah version two we got sir meowzlot as well i wonder if i have the version one of sir meowzlot so yeah no we i literally i i was like what do what do cats look like in other cartoons because i never really thought about it you never really see like sir meowzlot's legs in cartoon form even in the poster it's like you don't you don't actually ever see his legs so i looked up i saw how they did adventure time cats and i thought that that was pretty good so so that ended up being the end product of Sir I was super happy with that. But you can kind of get a general idea of how things are designed before going into an episode. Say like for Harry's situation, like whenever Sir Meowzlot cuts the Mona Lisa into the back of Dennis's head, they have that design ready in a slide like this. Same goes for like anything that you see on screen, it's all like designed beforehand. Even like, even the hairball that the clone Dennis <laughs> coughs up. They wanted a, yeah. Uh, what the what clone Dennis would look like uh, crouching they like everything every little detail so you can see how the storyboards are done here too they essentially just take parts of the script and then we'll design the scene around that like section of the of text and so this is Harry's situation here here's a part that was cut out of the original so in Harry's situation you can get a job it's amazing how handy the internet is you can find anything well I'm gonna go do some errands. So there, he was like, it's amazing how handy the internet is. You can find anything. In the original storyboard, he says, it's amazing how handy the internet is. You can find anything. And then there was supposed to be like a super close, like zoom in on Dennis's face. And he goes like, and I mean anything. And then we realized that that was really weird and kind of off-putting and we just cut that but it's just in general there every single episode that you see there is so much that ended up being changed or cut because each episode has to hit that three minute mark there were some things some jokes and stuff that because a joke ran like two or three seconds too long we just had to cut the whole bit entirely okay here's a great example so in skunked so the episode opens up with Dennis immediately walks up to Sir Meowzlot looking there out the you window. Are. I found your favorite toy. Look. Okay, so he walks up to Sir Meowzlot holding this toy, but 
in the original storyboard, it shows the house and Dennis is walking down the stairs with like a huge stack of fine china, but then he trips on the toy that he brings to Sir Miyazla. We kind of wanted to like establish the toy more. Dennis is walking down the stairs and then he trips on the toy and then the fine china like smashes everywhere. But the only thing Dennis notices is like, <gasps> he sees like the, the toy on the ground and he's like, Sir Miyazla, I found your favorite toy. And he's like looking around the house and then he sees that Sir Miyazla's looking out the window and that's when he comes in and and he's like, I found your favorite toy, look. So we had the episode just start right here on page eight. We cut the first eight pages because the episode just ran a little bit too long and we just removed that bit entirely. But that's why it's funny because there's like a bunch of fine China references in the show. In like later episodes, you'll see like an Unleashed. Unleashed being one of my favorite episodes. Also fun fact. Ah, come on, Sir Meowslaw, the leash is a great idea. Oops gotta find a better spot for those. So that's a callback to the fine china being dropped down the stairs in viral video. Viral video was intended to be episode nine. And you can see here. How about the classic cat on treadmill? You see fine china shoot out of the side. So there's these weird like callbacks to things, but then like some episodes were rearranged. But anyways, that's like a little, I guess like semi Easter egg. So one thing I really like talking about with Harry's situation, this episode, Sir Maslot sees a barbershop ad and he gets all these ideas of different hairstyles and stuff he could have for himself. This was one of the first episodes ever written. But the thing is, it was originally written that he would show up to this barbershop. Also, if you didn't notice, it's pretty obvious. There's a little pinchy Easter egg right here, pinchy reading the newspaper. What does it mean? That's for you to think about and me to not say anything. <laughs> but anyway, Samuel shows up to the barbershop and the way the episode plays out is Dennis ends up coming to the barbershop to get a haircut. That was one of the errands he had to do. But the way the episode was originally written is that Tamarazla goes to the barbershop to get a haircut. He sees that nobody's working. So then he decides he's gonna cut his own hair. But instead of Dennis walking in, it was some stranger that walks in. I think we had it written as like an old lady and she wants a haircut. So then Sir Miazla gives her something and she ends up liking it, even though it's like ridiculous. And then this like draws attention from the town. Uh, there ends up being this big lineup outside the barber shop, and we'd be introducing a bunch of like characters from that. They're going in and walking out with like a crazy hairstyle. Dennis notices this line and he's like, what the heck is going on? Cut all of that entirely. Main thing being we're like, that is way too much work having that many characters because you got to keep in mind every tiny little thing matters. As soon as you add another character or another like joke or something, you're always working with like a budget and a time frame and you really need to think like, does this one like two or three second joke, is the payoff of it worth the extra amount of like money and time that it'll take essentially. So it does end up becoming very like complicated in terms of like little details and whatnot. Oh, this part here in Harry's situation. Huh? I'm bald? Awesome. Yeah. You know, I heard bald people have secret powers. So him saying, I heard bald people have secret powers. That is a callback to one of my actual videos. Let me see if he knows that life's a lot harder when you're bald. <laughs> That's not actually true. I'm sure many of you who are watching probably have dads that are bald and they're, it's totally okay. It's fine, you know. I heard myths that bald people have superpowers. You know, they, they don't like. Well, anyways, <laughs> this is a dumb joke that kind of caught on a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, I, I ended up using it in the script. But yeah, there, there's little things like, I didn't want the show to be just like a complete like child of the channel like I really wanted to make sure that it has potential to just sort of grow and be its own thing aside from YouTube. So I was being a little bit careful about like not using too many exact references and stuff like I, I, I at one point um, I think there was even the idea of like 
Do we make the Dennis character in the show like a YouTuber, gamer kind of thing? And I sort of decided against it. I was like, I kind of want it to be its own thing, kind of have him be like his own separate character. Like it's still very, again, it feels very like authentic to the channel. I, I do think we did a good job of that, but yeah, I was being a little bit careful to not make it just like, you know, direct like, Roblox or YouTube references or anything like that. Here's a little bit and working it out that I thought would be really funny. Lady barks a bit, throws the trash off screen. Dennis is like, wow, Lady barks a bit. When did you get so buff? And then she flexes her muscle and then out pops a mini Lady barks a bit that then flexes that is just made out of muscle. <laughs> Dennis goes like, so cool, <laughs> but that bit was just cut. We didn't have time for it. Like, let's say even the credits, for example, uh, when it comes to like saving time. So this is what just like the normal credits right now sound like. When it's just you and me, my best buddy, I cannot comprehend how when we're together on moments like forever, you'll always be my friend. I really, really, really love the credit song. Uh, a lot of you guys have been mentioning that to me as well. It's actually sang by my friend, Sam Karam. She's like Gabby, one of Gabby's best friends. And I, and I was like, hmm, yeah, I need a credit song. And Gabby's like, well, Sam's a very good singer. You could try her. And I gave her some like basic lyrics to work with. Uh, and then she gave me this and I was, th I was so thrilled. The reason I showed you that there guys is like, if you listen closely. When it's just you and me. My best buddy. Okay, now I'm gonna play the original closing theme. When it's just you and me, my best buddy, I cannot comprehend how when we're together on moments like forever, you'll always be my friend. I don't know if you can tell, but the actual credits in the episodes is sped up. So we even had to save time in the credits by like one second. It's like one second. We had to speed it up slightly. Sometimes it was very frustrating being like, uh, I really, really, really want to keep this like one joke, this one thing, but we just can't. We like actually just couldn't fit it in, which is why I really love the idea of having episodes in the future that are like a longer format, like 11 minute episodes would be so good. So many more things I'd be able to fit in because I love the idea of having like a, an overarching plot. I already have a bunch of ideas for that. There's, there's, very small hints that are currently in the show that 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 hint at this like larger overarching plot that I don't want to say I don't want to like spoil anything in case we do have a chance in the future to be able to really like expand on those like hints and stuff but and some of you guys we can like react to your guys's reactions as well uh some of you guys have come up with some very very interesting theories um, some of which I will say are actually kind of accurate and I am blown away <laughs> that like how much people can extrapolate from just like little hints and stuff. Oh, actually one of the first things that comes up is Dennis and me Easter eggs. Wait, what Easter egg is this one? This is the Dennis clone or someone else? What are they looking at there? Oh, <gasps> what? <laughs> Wait, I will say there's a lot of things about the show that like I didn't do everything guys that'd be impossible it is a team of like every part of the team is like an expert in their own field and so there's a lot of things about the show like hilarious little like jokes or moments that I didn't really have a part of it all it would just be like the the sound design they would just include like some little like extra detail or like sound or something that would just make a joke so much funnier or the storyboard artist or like the director would, would say like oh like let's put this little thing in the background and then I don't even know about it but then I see it after and I'm like oh my god that is so good oh yeah up there okay yeah 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 <laughs> it's up here in cucumbers you see in the window there you see the clone jump behind the tree i told them i was like yeah put put the clone in as like a little easter egg and just find like a good moment in each episode to have the clone in the background because maybe just maybe we may see the clone return in the future maybe mm. yeah the 
director and animators made the clone so much harder to spot <laughs> than I was like envisioning it, but I love it. I love that it's like little Easter eggs you really, really need to look out for. Big inspiration for that was the waving snail in Adventure Time. I love that. I love that every now and then you're like, you're always kind of on the edge of your seat trying to find the snail. So I, want, I wanted something similar. But anyways though, guys, I think a big part of me wanting to make this video was just really getting it out there. How thankful I am for how the launch went and I want to make it very clear to you guys that we didn't just put this out and then forget about it like I'm I'm checking this channel all the time I've rewatched the episodes even after they've come out so so many times I'm looking everywhere like if you left any sort of like a Google review or IMDB review or whatever like there's a good chance that I've read it because I'm so curious what what you guys have to say and you'll notice that you you can't actually comment on any of these videos because we did have to follow COPA rules, which like totally understandable, that's fine, but it is, it does kind of suck that I can't just click on an episode and then see the immediate feedback on it. So another part of me wanting to make this video is I would, I want to hear so bad what you guys think. Um, I want to hear like, what are your favorite episodes? What are your favorite moments? Predictions? What you would want to see in the future? Like if I, I, I there's, I, I just, anything that you have to say, I would love to so much if you left a comment on this video because uh, I'm gonna a hundred percent be going through and reading as much as I possibly can I am so curious I usually if there's a if there's a video that I put out and I I'm proud of it and I want to hear what people have to say I'll just spend hours reading the comments but I can't do that with the show and I really really want to it's like the only thing I want to do so I would really really love if you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below of this video. But other than that, one final thank you. I honestly, I never talk about views. Over time, what has started mattering to me so much more is just the overall like response to a video, whether it's like the amount of likes that it has or what the comments have to say. That being said, uh, the fact that these epi- like, okay, my expectations, I think I would have been happy I would have not not just happy. I would have been like, wow, we made a successful show if each episode had like two, three hundred thousand views each. I would have been like, I'm pretty happy with that. I would say that's like that's a successful season one. We got room to grow, but I'm happy that it's out there and people are enjoying it. It's been one week and so many of these videos have like they're they're already all pretty much at a million views like i that's insane to me that is insane i i feel i feel weird like talking about the views and stuff but just i i really can't tell you guys just how crazy that is i hope you know it isn't going unnoticed at all this is a literal dream come true so thank you guys again okay i'm gonna stop hammering into it but it's been a pretty crazy year and a half um so i'm so excited to keep working on this show there are plans to uh i don't want to like say anything too much just yet considering things aren't like fully solidified but i would love more than anything to keep working on this and make it even bigger and better and so that's why i want to hear what you guys have to say about the future of the show any ideas that you have thank you guys again so much for watching if you haven't already Dennis and me, go subscribe, link in the description, as well as all the merch on DennisDaily.com, cool new Dennis dad hat, and 2021 kitty of the day calendar, and like a plethora of other things, go check it all out. And I guess what other way to finish a video like this than with a slam dunk? The only reason I say slam dunk, I know it's not a dunk, but I say dunk because it sounds a lot cooler to say than, oh, than a three point shot. It just doesn't have the same ring to it, you know? I guess you could say that this video was a slam dunk. Well, that may have been one of the worst shots I've ever done. Thankfully, we got the rebound. Ha <sighs> Thank you again, guys, so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. That's a cat and that's a guy. Together forever they'll be. If you look up best friend.